For the night trunkers of Britain's industrial roads, another long journey is finishing. The combination of tough driver and reliable truck is once again arriving safely at journey's end. Together they brought thousands of pounds worth of goods across hundreds of lonely miles. Now for driver Ken Woods, the transport depot means release from hours of concentration. Dead on schedule, a Nuffield built truck has again safely delivered its load. It's an upside down life for men like Ken. But while the mechanics take over the huge trucks in the depot, Ken is on his way home to sleep. No rush hour crush for him, just a wave to a friend you and I never see, the early morning milkman, and he reaches the home of the Jackson family with whom he lodges. Today is a special day for the Jacksons. Mr. Jackson is a foreman at the factory where Morris commercial vehicles are made. And today, his 15-year-old son is joining the firm as an apprentice. Johnny is a bit scared at the moment and rather envies his father's appetite. But Mr. Jackson has been doing this routine for 25 years. Oh dear, Johnny really is off his food and he's in no mood to stand Eileen's teasing. For Eileen too, it's a big day. She works in a flower nursery. And for the first time, she's in charge of the decorations for a big wedding reception. And although she doesn't appreciate it, like the rest of the family, her day too will revolve around transport. But heck, look at the time. Only half an hour to go and it takes ten minutes to get to the factory. It'd never do for a chap to be late on his first day. It's a great moment when you walk through the gateway to your first job. Boyhood is behind, and ahead lies a lifetime of opportunity in the career you've chosen. Today, not even the gate men know you. Tomorrow, you're as much a part of the place as the clock on the wall. Mr. Jackson is early today so that Johnny can have a quick look around before he reports to the supervisor. On the silent production line, his father briefly explains the layout to him. And then, since he has to clock in, leaves the boy on his own for a few moments. Now, what to explore first? You know, it'd be fun to be a driver like Ken. Maybe they'll put me onto chassis assembly. No, the engine is the real heart of a vehicle. Everything else can be perfect, but if the engine breaks down, the rest is meaningless. I'd love to know all about engines. That's what I'd really like, to work on diesels and understand them. But when his father indicates some of the features of the engine to him, Johnny wonders if it's all a nightmare. Valves being operated through rocker gear, wet cylinder liners, shrouded inlet valves and cavity-type pistons. Do we expect him to know all about these things? But there's the whistle. Explanations will have to wait. It's 7.30, and the assembly line is moving smoothly into production. Commercial vehicles of all sizes flow again to customers who know what they want. Their drivers must be safe and comfortable. And so into the design of these cabs go the latest results of modern research. The customer who orders one of these vehicles does so because he has to handle really tough jobs. That's why Morris commercial cars provide an extra strong chassis, rigidly braced with sturdy cross members and heavy duty steel wheels. The exceptionally robust rear axle with extra strong springs will safely carry the maximum permitted gross load over any road. Step by step, as they move along the assembly line, the various trucks take shape. Every working part has to be engineered specifically for heavy duty. Indeed, the whole vehicle has been designed and built to thrive on fast working schedules. When they come from this production line, the owner knows he's getting rugged quality and value that only British craftsmanship can supply. The apprentice supervisor is an experienced officer who guides the boys in their careers, so that both they and the firm may reap the greatest benefit from the individual's ability. Pride in the firm one works for is important, 
and Johnny's pride is stirred as he hears of the early triumph of Morris commercial cars. Will he too see such great changes as have occurred since the first model was produced in 1924? What will the next 30 years bring? What will the vehicles be like when he's foreman? Now steady Johnny, you're not halfway through the first morning yet. Your sister is taking things calmly, although this is her big day too. But the routine things have to be done before the flowers can be transported to the reception. Fragile things, aren't they? Have you thought how you'll get them there uncrushed? Now don't worry, the experts have solved that. Just drink your tea and forget it. <laughs> 